Smoker, it's time for our video. Ah, ah I forgot them. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. We had barbecue party with our new subscribers and they didn't want me to go. And because of their plasma shoulder cannon, you understand I cannot leave. Before we start, I want to remind you our latest video. The deepest abysses in the world. Did you miss it? Click on the eye icon in the top right corner to watch it. Today's topic is educational but still interesting. It's about our channel's favorite topic, tsunami. We want to explain five ways how tsunamis are formed. Maybe you will be surprised that earthquake is not the only cause, even it is most common. A tsunami, from Japanese harbor wave, is a series of waves in a water body caused by the displacement of a large volume of water, generally in an ocean or a large lake. Earthquakes The vast majority of tsunamis form due to earthquakes, specifically tectonic tsunamis. As an earthquake happens, the ground beneath the water is moved up and or down abruptly and as this movement happens, a mass of water is displaced and starts moving in all directions. This marks the start of a tsunami. As the wave starts moving towards the shore, a series of things starts to happen. First of all, water gets shallower and shallower. As a result, the height of the tsunami starts to increase and can increase dramatically. This is the main cause why these waves are so dangerous. Because when they carry on huge masses of water and when they get closer to the shoreline, because the water gets shallower, their height starts to increase. Tsunamis don't stop once they hit land. Much of their energy is dissipated and reflected back but some of it is still maintained, and tsunamis will continue to travel inland until all their energy is gone. So don't think that if you are a bit farther from the beach, you are safe. In some rare instances, tsunamis can also travel up river valleys. Landslides. Landslides of various kinds can push water around. Mountains may crumple to the sea as the song goes. Mudslides may plop into lakes and reservoirs. And land that lies entirely beneath the waves may fail. In all cases, the landslide material displaces water and the water responds in very large waves that spread rapidly 
fought in all directions. Many landslides occur during earthquakes, so landslides can complicate seismic tsunamis. The role of landslides in tsunamis has become more important as tsunami modeling has advanced. The deadly A-taped tsunami in Papua New Guinea on 17 July 1998 was preceded by an earthquake of magnitude 7, but seismologists couldn't make the seismic data match the tsunami observations until seafloor surveys later showed that a large submarine landslide was also involved. Now awareness has been raised. Volcanoes Volcanoes can form tsunamis through two mechanisms. Either they collapse or they eject matter with such strength that they uplift the water. In the first case, land-based volcanoes can also cause tsunamis if they are very close to the sea. Meteorites If you have ever thrown a pebble into the water, you've seen that it creates ripples. The meteorite is kind of the same thing, except it creates huge ripples. This kind of tsunamis are really rare, but not impossible. The asteroid linked to the extinction of dinosaurs, which created the Chicxulub crater in Yucatan approximately 66 million years ago, would have caused an over 330 feet tall mega tsunami. The height of the tsunami was limited due to the relatively shallow sea in the area of the impact. In deep sea, it would be 2.9 miles tall. Manimate or triggered tsunamis. There have been studies of the potential of the induction of and at least one actual attempt to create tsunami waves as a tectonic weapon. There has been considerable speculation on the possibility of using nuclear weapons to cause tsunamis near to an enemy coastline. Nuclear testing in the Pacific probing ground by the United States seemed to generate poor results. Operation Crossroads fired two 20 kilotons of TNT bombs, one in the air and one underwater above and below the shallow 160 feet waters of the Bikini Atoll Lagoon. Fired about 3.7 miles from the nearest island, the waves there were no higher than 9.8 to 13.1 feet upon reaching the shoreline. Other underwater tests, mainly Hartak 1 Wehu deep water and Hartak 1 umbrella shallow water, confirmed the results. Analysis of the effects of shallow and deep underwater explosions indicate that the energy of the explosions doesn't easily generate the kind of deep all-ocean waveforms, which are tsunamis. Most of the energy creates steam, causes vertical fountains above the water, and uh, creates compressional waveforms. And this is the end of this video. Did we forget something important? Let us know in the comments, as always. In the next video, we will continue with our series of most destructive tsunamis in the history. The main topic of the video will be tsunami caused by huge Krakatoa explosion, one of the tallest tsunami in the human history. Be sure, you will not miss it. So subscribe to our channel. 
Thanks for watching and bye. Okay guys, we are finished with our video. <laughs> Let's continue to barbecue party. Come on.